Towards the end of the 1990s, writer-director Michael Winterbottom had his films piling up, waiting to be released in UK cinemas. Within 15 months of each other, Winterbottom released I Want You, then With or Without You, followed by Wonderland. All of these were made while Winterbottom was trying to get the claim off the ground at the same time. Winterbottom could possibly lay claim to being the busiest British film director at that time, considering the amount of productions he was involved in. It is Wonderland that I want to focus on here, though. A film set during that oh-so-British night of bonfire night. But it's not an assassination movie, or a story about somebody called Guy. It's a movie about London and its inhabitants. I like to think of myself as independent, honest self-aware and I'd like to meet someone looking for friendship and, and possible romance. Well he said she had sex with fish last night. That is not <laughs> what I said. <laughs> Shut up. Hello. How are we doing? Good. Yeah? Yeah. How's Dad? Oh. Same as ever. Jealous of me. Jealous of what, Molly? The baby. It's gonna be amazing. Can I ring it? Yeah, sure. That was a little boy. It's little, isn't it? <laughs> Mom, Dad's here. You are just kidding me. You're moving. I'm like a ticking time bomb, Molly. And then one day. Oh. Laurence Corat, born in France but moved to London in her 20s, wrote Wonderland for Winterbottom after being heavily influenced by Robert Altman's short cuts. That 1993 film told intertwining stories about a group of residents living in Los Angeles. Corat wanted to do the same for London, a city she had come to love. Winterbottom took inspiration from elsewhere. He had seen and loved Wong Kar Wai's Chungking Express. Another film about the inhabitants of a city and their intertwining lives. Winterbottom pulled in Sean Bobbitt as his director of photography. Bobbitt had previously only worked on documentaries, yet that's exactly how Winterbottom wanted the film to look. He wanted the film to look raw and real, not stylized like a feature film would. Natural light was used, handheld cameras, all shooting off 16mm. They would shoot in packed out pubs at 11pm at night, most of the patrons unaware that they were part of a movie. They also filmed at a real football match, trying to catch the real emotion from the crowd as the two actors played around them. It could be suggested that Winterbottom was following Danish directors Lars von Trier and Thomas Vinterberg's Dogma 95 filmmaking movement when he was making Wonderland. But Winterbottom denied this and explained that it wasn't a case of following dogma, but rather making a film that had connections between the lead characters and all the other people around them, and how they became part of a bigger story within a city. Wonderland's release schedule was strangely scattershot, debuting at the 1999 Cannes Film Festival to huge applause and a nomination for Best Director for Winterbottom. It then saw a staggered release across Europe before eventually appearing on UK cinema screens in the January of 2000 to great acclaim and a respectable box office return, for Winterbottom's films at least. Winterbottom made Wonderland in the same mould as his earlier film Welcome to Sarajevo. It's interlinked stories about the lives of those it focused on, yet it was also about the city these inhabitants lived in and how it affected their lives. Can anybody be truly happy in a city of 7 million people? Judging by Wonderland, it appears that the only happy person is the one escaping up north with his girlfriend. As the ten central characters ebb and flow around London, taking in places such as Elephants in Castle, Brixton, Soho, Southwark, and more, it starts to become clear that Winterbottom's film is a social realism movie in the same vein as Ken Loach's work. But then in the blink of an eye, it isn't. It becomes something different. It becomes a story about stories. A film about the never-ending life of Londoners who seem to be without happiness yet have an unbreakable connection with those closest to them. Something that possibly can only be about living in a city. 
Wonderland gives us already established characters. There are no backstories here. You're asked to fill them in yourself. Instead, we're treated to intertwining story arcs about three sisters and their parents who are all living in a city that seems to consume the weakest and reward the strongest. This is a social realist film that plays more like a documentary rather than a kitchen sink drama. It is free, without boundaries, movie making. It's free cinema. Do you want to know what I think? No, but you're going to tell me anyway. Franklin, I wish you'd get a girlfriend. <laughs> Before. No, he's supposed to be looking after him, isn't he? Listen to someone for once. Eddie, we had a fight and he's gone. My name's Theodore. I thought your message was very nice. You've got a lovely voice. Stimulating conversation. Uh, I like clubbing. My name's Stevie. Yeah, uh, my name's Stephen. I put the buzz back into my bumblebee life.